Hey everyone, it's Kim McNeil. Thanks for checking out my videos again. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, recorded anything, but I've been uh, inspired by some of you, some of my friends and students, uh, who've asked me to post some videos on uh, core work specifically. So I thought I would get on the mat and uh, show you a few things. We're going to work towards two poses, really three actually. Uh, the first one will be Urdhva Prasri Padasana, or Upward Extended Foot Pose. And we're going to take it in steps, so we'll be starting with a very basic exercise, progressing, uh, and then advancing to the full pose. So you can take it as far as you want, listen to your body, of course, and, uh, and uh, yeah, take your time with it, okay? So you need a lot of space, basically just a mat, not really a lot of space, and then a strap. And if you don't have a strap, you can use, oh, I don't know, an old tie, or uh, uh, you know, if you have a terry cloth robe, not that I do, but one of those, the tie, you can use that. And you're gonna lie over it, right? So you're gonna put it across your mat, and you want it to come around right where your belly button uh, lines up. So, come to your mat, bend your knees, and measure that out. So take your fingers from your belly button down the sides, and make sure your, your strap is right under there. So not under your buttocks, and not up by your mid back, right around the waist. And we're going to start right away with a, what I think is one of the best core exercises. Get into those deep abdominals, the transverse abdominals, um, to strengthen those areas. And what you want to always start to feel, or feel to do, is to draw the lower back gently to the floor. Draw the navel in, or the belly button in towards the spine. You can start this right away, right? You go from an arch, and get rid of this arch, press down gently, pelvic tuck, that way, or posterior tuck. You can make sure that you're doing that enough by giving a little tug on the strap, only on one end, right? So one side, and uh, be honest with yourself, give it a good tug and see if you can move it, move that strap from up from under you. If you can't, then you're doing the right work. You should be able to feel it along your abdominals, and especially by your lower abdominals. So once you have that, you can hold it a little bit longer, right? Increase the, uh, the whole length, remember to breathe, keep the face relaxed, etc. Then, progressing from here, make it a little bit more challenging, bring your knees over your hips. So you want your thighs parallel to the floor, not knees to belly, that would be too easy, okay? So we want to challenge, challenge the core. So parallel, or perpendicular, excuse me, to the floor with the thighs, knees over the hips, and then draw the belly towards the spine, lower back presses to the floor gently, and oh, give a little bit of tug, not moving. Next step, keeping this, you can either hold that that's your limit, or you can start to do a little bit of marching. One leg is still, the other leg moves. Give a little bit of a tug, again be honest, make sure that strap doesn't move. One leg marches at, at one time. So really emphasize being still with the other leg. And then you can see, how I'm progressing, going further and further with the leg in terms of straightening it out. You can come all the way down to the floor with the heel and then back up. Never hold your breath. So a couple more times. So you might stay at the tiny marches, somewhere in between, or all the way down. So you decide. And once you get used to that action, right, of contracting those transverse abdominis, then you won't necessarily need the strap anymore, okay? It's a, it's a good tool to use when you're learning the action, but eventually, if you feel it working, you can get rid of that, or at least not have to, to pull on it. So, once we've mastered those steps, and uh, the back feels fine, and you, you've built up your strength, then you can go towards the full pose. So this is graduating, right? This is grad school. So not necessarily for beginners or when you're first starting out. But same idea, belly to the spine, knees over the hips. You can keep your arms beside you or if you have the ability to flex in the shoulders enough and take your arms over the head, palms up. So uh, you can ground the arms and you can take them overhead. That's going to help to lengthen the spine and I find it um, feels good to, uh, to get that length and to draw the belly down a little bit more. If your elbows are bent, your hands are winging off the floor, you can't quite ground, then the arms should be here. Don't put any strain on the shoulders and the upper back. 
then work to take those legs up 90 degrees. So yes, we might not have the flexibility through the hamstrings. That's why it's more of a gradua, graduate pose, right? Not necessarily a beginner pose. So if we don't quite have that flexibility, we'll be able to get to 90 degrees. But once we've worked on the hamstring stretches, that'll be another video, right? You can check that out after. You can come to this 90 degrees. Arms beside or arms above. Belly to the floor, belly to the spine, quads active, drawing the thigh bones back down into the hip sockets, pressing the buttocks down, and then at the other opposite end, heels press away, holding here. And there's always further to take it. So last step, this is PhD work. You can lower the legs to 60 degrees and hold, and come back up, exhaling, inhaling down to 30 degrees from the floor, come back up, and then slowly lower all the way down with control. And rest there. So we don't want to see any arching of the back. We don't want this to happen. We don't want the ribs to pop out and your back to arch. Always think of that action of drawing the belly to the spine that we did at the very beginning with the strap. So try that, see how that goes, progress, build up the strength through your, your core that way. And then you can move on to the second pose that we'll work on today, which is Navasana, or boat pose. This one is great for building strength in the back. And you'll need a couple things. Props in the form of blocks, or, uh, you know, books do the same job, or uh, magazines, I don't know, house and home, <laughs> yoga journal, uh, yeah, maxim, I don't know, but pile them up, make sure they're the right height, and, uh, and have those for Navasana. So sitting on your mat, right up onto your, your sit bones, as we'll call them. Nice straight spine, knees bent, hands under the knees. This might be your, your pose, right? The farthest you want to take it. With the sternum lifting, the chest lifting, the mid-back drawing in, nice straight spine, slight lean like so. Then, taking the heels off, feeling the work again, connecting this to the previous pose where you had to straw, start drawing the belly in towards the spine. We're not lying on the floor now, but it's the same, same work. Then, to take the feet off the floor, you can either put your hands on blocks, or if you can reach the floor with the hands, fingertips pointing towards the feet, you can take your hands to the floor for support. Okay? Same action, belly to spine, chest up, mid back in, taking one foot off, then the other foot off. Maintaining this lift, nice gentle even breaths, and hold, and release. If you're feeling that in your hip flexors, it's because they're probably trying to help a little bit too much. So work more on the core. Okay? Maybe you want to back up and do the uh, previous pose a little bit few, a uh, couple more times before you try this one. Then, if you master it though, you can keep going with Navasin without the support of the hands, hands under the knees, lifting one foot, lifting the other foot, chest lifts, shoulders down, belly in. And then maybe you release the hands, stretching towards the feet, keeping these legs now squeezing together. And then finally, one leg straight or both legs straight support, and come down. So try those two. Work baby steps from the floor, literally, up from there to uh, Urdhva Prasvipadasana and Navasana to release the spine and the core while still working different parts of the core, mainly the obliques. We'll finish off with a twist, Jatari Parvitanasana, or stomach turning pose. This one it tends to be a favorite of of mine and my students. So you're laying down again, give yourself the space to stretch your arms out to the side in a T. So option one or level one, knees bent, feet on the floor, slowly exhale and drop the knees to the right. Keeping the knees together as much as you can and the heels together while still grounding through the upper body. So that opposite shoulder, left shoulder, left arm. Hold for a couple breaths. 
exhale to return to the middle, and then the other side. Dropping the knees to the left on an exhalation. You can hold this for longer on either side. So a couple breaths, to five, six breaths. Exhaling, returning back to the middle. A little bit more advanced, bringing the knees into the belly, scooting the buttocks to the left when we want to twist or drop the knees to the right. So exhaling to the right. Keeping, again, the upper body on the floor, left shoulder, left arm, grounding, knees come together. And if you're feeling really good here, then you can think of bringing your knees to that shoulder, or excuse me, the elbow. Nice tight tuck. Breathe, hold for another five breaths or so. To come out, you want to think of pressing the back down towards the floor. Okay, so not just winging the legs back up. You really want to ground the back, draw the navel in to come out. So exhale, pressing down to the floor, shifting your hips to the other side slightly, knees in, exhale the other direction. So knees to that elbow, keeping the knees together, heels together as much as you can, ground through the upper back. It's called stomach turning pose because of the action of the navel. So yes, the legs in this direction are dropping to the left, but the belly wants to move, the belly button wants to point back up to the ceiling. That's where you get that deep stretch, the deep work in those obliques. And press the back down towards the floor, exhale, come back to center, and then release. Okay? So try that sequence out. Don't expect it to happen overnight to go from Buddha belly <laughs> to uh, a six pack, but over time you'll definitely start to feel your core strengthening. Your back is going to feel better. It's great for um, core strength, it's great for helping with um, some back issues, back pain, etc. So do it every day, 10 minutes, go through the sequence, and uh, let me know what you think. KimmyKneelyoga.ca, or you can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Thanks, guys.